Hi, I'm Chris Thomas, Director of Artist Relations at Martin Guitar. Here to explain Martin's new vintage tone system, also known as VTS, are a couple of experts from the custom shop. I'm Fred Green, Chief Product Officer from Martin Guitar. And I'm Jeff Allen, General Manager of the Custom Shop. I think the primary thing that brought about Vintage Tone System for us was we wanted to talk about, or we were always talking about, how can we make a new guitar sound like an old guitar? Uh, we've got a museum full of fantastic old instruments, and it's always a treat when we get to go in and play. Absolutely. And you're always amazed at how great these guitars sound. They're just so incredible. And there's a sound that comes from them that you just seems a bit elusive when you're dealing with new guitars. Sometimes a new guitar can sound a little dark or mushy. It takes a while for those to break in. Right, exactly. So we were trying to figure out what is it about these old guitars that sounds so fantastic. Uh, we spend a lot of time working on different construction techniques on instruments, and there's only so much you can do physically with a guitar in terms of bracing or neck shapes or body woods that you're using. So we figured there's got to be something a little bit different. So I, th I think what started was we had some old tops that we had removed from old guitars. And I this charged you with, find me a way to make some of these new guitars sound like those old guitars. Yeah, and we'll, we'll say here, disclaimer, destroyed old guitars first. We did not, <laughs> we did not destroy an old guitar. <laughs> Thank you. They're a little pricey. Yes. They're yes. a little pricey. So okay. we took the old guitar, we took the top, and we started looking at those tops under the microscope to see what was different. Because right. let's face it, everyone agrees, most everyone, that those old guitars sound fantastic. That's the sound that we are looking for. And if we could get that in a new guitar, or at least sooner than 50 years, that would be fantastic. Yeah, I'd like my guitar to sound good now. I'm buying it <laughs> now. I really don't want to wait 50 years. Uh, right. My kids will really enjoy the way the new guitar sounds, but I probably won't be enjoying it quite as much. So if you could get that to me today, I'd be happy. So I think last year we started talking about um, torrefaction and Tim Teal brought up the idea of torrefaction mm -hmm. to us and he got some sample pieces in. We actually did a guitar last year, a custom shop yes. model last year with some pretty basic torrefaction done to it. And it was, it was very successful. I mean, the sound of that guitar was surprising. The clarity, the highs, the yeah. warmth right out of the box was fantastic. It did sound you knew a lot had different. something. Right, you knew something was working there. Definitely. So that was, that was a good part, but it was dark. It was. It was really dark. The color of the wood just didn't look natural like this. Exactly. So we're trying to figure, can we make it a little bit lighter in color? And you guys started experimenting with the torrefaction process with some of our vendors. So can you tell me a little bit about how that experimentation went along and how you got to where we are today? Okay, so we first wanted to make sure that we kept the color somewhere close. So that was the first thing. We thought if we can use torrefaction, the historical torrefaction process at all, right. and keep the color of the wood somewhat natural, we thought we had a winner. But that was the trick because as soon as you torrefy wood, it's under a lot of heat, a lot of pressure. There's, there's a vacuum in the oven so that the wood won't catch on fire. Right. Basically, it's hot enough that the wood would burn. So they remove all the oxygen out of the kiln. It's superheated for a while. And then this wood, all of the water, all the moisture, all the, some of the chemical properties of the wood starts to break down just like it would do if it was an old guitar top. Right. Naturally over time, that will happen anyway. Right, but some of the old guitars, you could tell when we had the, the tops off some of the old guitars, how, how dry some of that wood looked and how it just looked different on the inside. Now, I know you guys used microscopes and other things to really look at the cell structure of those old tops and try to hone in on, the, on a new process because there's, there's other people who are doing torrefaction out there in the world and I want to make really clear what we're doing is not what everyone else is doing. Correct. It's sort of our own thing that we worked with somebody to do it kind of the Martin way to get the sound we want to get. Yes, we found an, a manufacturer locally that basically has been doing torrefied wood for a long time. Right. And we approached them and said, we have this project and we want this project to, to go somewhere they're maybe not comfortable going, which is to change that process. So working with this manufacturer, they were very hesitant to change a process that they have basically been doing for decades and to try to use it on a guitar, and not only a guitar, to try to change that so that we're chasing tone. Right. Something they knew nothing about. 
Because they were doing torrefaction for a to totally different reason. Outdoor lumber. All right, because it was hydrophobic. It's what they call yes. hydrophobic when it basically repels water. Yes. And that water, that water is part of the natural makeup of the wood. And as you remove it, it's how you remove it is very critical for how this, this top is going to remain stable or unstable over time. If someone exposes a guitar to a lot of water, right. you'll notice the top will start to deform. Right. And that's because the cell structure continues to move. If this is a cell wall, as water comes in, the cell will stretch to take on more water. As it dries, it shrinks. And any rapid gain or loss of moisture will cause the wood to split sometimes. And that's why you see outdoor decking, those things, they split. Okay. Hydrophobic means that water will not affect the cell wall the same way. So I can introduce as much water or remove it as I want to a piece of wood that has been torrefied and the cell wall stays the same. So that's why when you have an old guitar, they actually get more stable. I mean, once they've aged and sort of gotten to a point, they really don't move around a whole lot, right? Right. And then that's part of the sound that's coming from is that stability. You're kind of hearing that come through from a tonal property. So after this process that you've come up with, does it make the wood more difficult to work with or easier to work with? Well, the answer is a little bit of both. So the wood does act more like an old guitar top. So if you were to take an old piece of wood and start working with it, naturally it's drier right. and a little more brittle. Okay. Some of that is what adds to the great tone. As it's dry, it's more brittle. But it also stabilizes the wood. So torrefaction stabilizes wood in such a way that the moisture does not affect it like it would if it was a new piece of wood. When you cut a tree down and you dry it under conventional kiln methods, the wood still has a lot of water in it and the cell structure is still very pliable. I got you. The torrefaction process and, and Martin's new VTS process, it actually allows the cell structure to have very minimal flexibility. So instead of drying it completely like Torfied does, which is 100% dry basically. It leaves about 20% of what a torrefied process would do. So, okay. so yes, the, the cell structure is very dry, it's very brittle, but it isn't as brittle as torrefied wood, the conventional method of torrefaction. Right. So that leaves a top that is easy to work with from the sense that the wood is very stable now. It, the dimensions won't move. As you cut the wood, it stays the dimension that it should be. As you glue up tight-fitting parts, they all fit well all together. Pretty well. Right. Now, let me ask you, because we try to get to a really specific, not specific, but a, a roundabout time frame, an era, because you can torrefy wood where you can make it essentially a really old piece of wood. Yes, yeah, so th when we did the first pieces last year, the torrefied pieces that were done under the conventional torrefaction process, under the microscope, those pieces of wood very closely mimicked the cell structure of a 200-year-old piece of wood. That's an old guitar. That's we're only 181 years old, Jeff. Correct. <laughs> so, so as we looked at comparing, it looked at those tops and compared them to the piece of torrefied wood, same species of wood, Adirondack spruce, you could see the similarities were there. So right. we knew we were on to something. Okay. So the next step was to go to the vendor and the supplier and say, can we work with you guys to develop our own process that allows us to target an era? Now we loosely can do a decade, certain decades, but let's say, let's say we want to do a 1930 eras authentic. 1930 OM45 Deluxe right here. So we said, how can we take the torrefaction process and very closely mimic this wood? That's pretty cool. I mean, this is the sound I'm looking for. Absolutely. When I go out and buy a guitar, now we bought the original version of the OM45 uh, at the Guernsey auction for $300,000. $300, That's a little out of most people's price range, I think for an old guitar. It's a house. So if we can make you a new guitar that sounds as good as the old guitar, then we've got something. And we've done some testing on this guitar and I think we've shown that it's pretty good. And your challenge to the team, to us, was to come up with a way to target that age group of guitars and see if we could not only mimic the stability of an old piece of wood and the stability right. of the sound, is to get that tone somewhere in the ballpark. Most people don't expect to buy a brand new guitar today and that thing to come out of the box sounding like, you know, a, a vintage 1930s vintage Martin. But if you could do it, you're really onto something. That's I think we're onto something because I've played these guitars. I know you've played these guitars. We've had a lot of people play them. And everybody's blown away every time you get the opportunity to test something with this VTS system on the wood. It, 
it does sound, it has that dry, woody sound that you get from a vintage guitar that you just, yes. it's so elusive and it's, it's really hard to explain until you experience it in person because you feel it against your body in a certain way that you just, new guitars sometimes can sound a little bit like they have a, like a wet blanket over them. They're, the wood's tight, the wood structure's tight, the glue joints are tight, and over time, over decades of aging naturally, the guitar will dry out. The wood will dry, and it does it in a natural way. Right. And the new Martin VTS process just allows that to happen a lot faster. So this sort of feels like an old Martin guitar that nobody's really played. Like if you had a guitar yes. that was in a case for the last 80 years, mm -hmm. and you pulled it out and you went, <laughs> There's a sound there that you just don't get from regular new guitars. That's right. And it's really coming from the top. It is. From the VTS. The VTS, and in the authentic line, that we did not only the top with that process, we did the bracing as well. Oh, so it's not just the top, it's the bracing and the top together. The only way to get that, that makes combination that makes sense. is to buy an authentic. Right, because it's just not the top that's aging, it's the bracing that's aging with it, and that's giving it some of the special vibe that you're that you're feeling on a vintage guitar. So when other people are just yes. doing the top, they're sort of missing a part of the solution here, aren't they? They are because the, the bracing, especially the bracing on the top, that is a big contributor to the overall tone of the guitar. Right. If, if the braces are super new and, and more pliable and green and the top is torrified, now you have an imbalanced two pieces of wood that are trying to work together as one and they're not balanced. This system allows the balance between the bracing and the top to be more together, they're unified. So they move the same. Right. Now, the early versions we did had a much darker top. This is a lighter top. Explain to me, what are you, what are you calling the two different colors of VTS tops? So that we have two versions, M1, which is the light color, as you see here, and an M2 version, which is a darker color. This is an example of the darker color. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can definitely you can see, see the difference. You can see the tone in the wood. Now, tonally, the guitars are very similar as far as how torrefaction affects the tone. But when you target certain eras, this M2 color isn't targeted at a certain time frame right. as this M1 VTS top. I got you. So we targeted the 1930s and that decade of instruments and that tone. So when you pull this guitar out of the box, it sounds very close to the original instrument that we modeled this model after. I don't even want to listen to you. I just want to play guitar. <laughs> then play it. <laughs> no, I don't, want to, I don't want to play in front of everybody because they're going to make fun of me later on. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. They should. I mean, it's a big sound, man. It is a big sound. And when you're playing this, and it doesn't translate over the camera, but you can feel this guitar. I mean, it just feeds back constantly against your it chest. It really does move. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I played, I played a lot of the guitars at our museum. And some of the most famous guitars in the world are in there. And this gives you that feeling. I think, I, honestly, I think if I were doing a blind test, I'd have a really hard time telling the difference. A really hard time. Well, we did a blind test. We did and? a blind test against the original instrument that this was modeled after. And in the blind test, it was unanimous. This guitar sounded exactly the same as good. And in some cases, a few people said that it actually sounded better. Again, this was blind. Tone is subjective. We all know that. But I think that the real goal was is to have a guitar that was closer to an old sounding instrument right out of the box. And the VTS and system allows you to do that. Absolutely. It's closer than we've ever been before.